But when the end of this year, and as some people will say, even this too will pass away. At the end of it, God will prove himself to be mighty. So we thank God this morning for what he's about to do. Our God in the midst of his people. So let's pray this morning. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We glorify and we magnify your name. We give you all the thanks and the praise in the name of Jesus. God, you are worthy to be magnified and worthy to be glorified. And we thank you this morning for life and breath, for waking us up this morning, for being in the land of the living, that we can honor and praise and magnify the God of heaven in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for everything that will be done, will be done in decency and in order. Father, we thank you for our brethren in their respective homes who are taking up this, oh God, live streaming this morning. That God, that your hands will be upon us in such a mighty way in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the ministry of the word. And we thank you, oh God, that you will be in the midst of this. So we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in the name of Jesus. So we just bless you and magnify your name. And everybody say amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we want to call on our, our worship minister, Sister Jamila, that will be coming this morning to bless us this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. God, for you alone are worthy to be praised. And you alone are worthy to be exalted. Oh God, all your words here, God, enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Oh God, into your courts with praise. So God, we give you a high note of praise this morning. God, our bless the Lord.
Come on, let's give God some praise this morning. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. God, you are worthy to be praised, worthy to be honored, and worthy to be glorified.
We'll go at 2 Corinthians 13 and we'll read from verse 1 to 6. I'm walking in obedience to my father. And he said, use the Amplified Version. And in the Amplified Version, it said, this is the third time that I have visited you. Every fact shall be sustained and confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I have already warned those who have sinned in the past and all the rest as well. And I warned them even though I am absent from you, as I did when I was with you the second time, that if I come back, I will not spare anyone. Since you seek forensic proof that Christ is speaking in and through me, he is not weak or ineffective in, in dealing with you, but powerful within you. For even though he was crucified in weakness, yielding himself, yet he lived, resurrected by the power of God his Father. For we too are weak in him, as he was humanly weak, yet we are alive and well in fellowship with him, because of the power of God provided directed towards you. Test and evaluate yourself to see whether you are in the faith and living your life as committed believers. Examine yourself, not me, or do you not recognize this about yourself by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail and test and are rejected as counterfeit. But I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. Those of you who are reading the King James Version, it has that we are rejected as reprobate in verse 5. And the end of verse 6 said, we do not fail the test as reprobate. And you know, when I was, I was reading the two versions, and I said, I remember in Romans, God said that he was speaking about a particular people, and he said he has turned them over to a reprobate mind. And a reprobate is a person rejected by God, and they're beyond hope of, of salvation. And it was hard knowing that there it is, Paul was speaking, and he was telling the believers, Paul was speaking to believers, and he was telling him, the believers, don't fail like reprobate. Don't become like reprobate. And, you know, when you go back to verse 5, he said, test and evaluate yourself to see whether you are in the faith and living your life as committed Christians. And today, we see the same thing happening. People living their life, they come into church, they're doing everything, and they're not committed to God. The word of God is for Sunday. And God is saying, this is the final warning I'm giving my children. You see what's happening right now. And many people are not taking heed. It's not unless you know someone or somebody from your family who has died from this virus that you will really take heed. There's many people that I know when I left New York, when I go back to New York, they will be there no more because they died. They got sick and they just passed on. It's hard. Come on. When I think of, you know, people who, they were believers, many pastors, they just passed on with this virus. And you wonder, you know, what, what is happening? And we pray, God, it's time. This thing has to end. Too many people, thousands of people are dying every day. Every day. When we look at the news, we hear about so many people. Thousands of people die within the space of 24 hours. And we just here living our life, not committed. God is saying it's time to examine yourself. Time to evaluate yourself. 
to examine yourself. Don't look at me. I have to examine myself also. Because I want to know God. That has been my prayer for this whole year. God, I want to know you. I want to move from the place of knowing about you. I want to know you. We know Moses knew God. There's few people in this world who ever get a chance to know God. I want to know God. We need to move from, you know, this year and say, but I know God. No, you don't. When you know God, you don't have to tell people. People see it in you. Come on. I want to know God. Hallelujah. God is saying that it's time for us to examine ourselves and become as committed Christian. Is Jesus Christ truly Lord and Savior of your life? That's what you have to ask yourself. Yes, I gave my life to Christ. Yes, I got baptized. baptized. So what? Are you living the life that you have been called to live? We have been called to a higher call. We so much in the world when we should be bringing the world, the people of the world in church to know our God. We're going outside. Let's examine ourselves. You, you, you find, you know, every day here hear of believers going through different stuff. And what will be, what they are? Um, Come on. They need a financial breakthrough. They go by somebody and tell them, well, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that, I need a financial breakthrough. You need a financial breakthrough? Spend time on your knees. Get before God. Put your face on the ground. When God bless you, be a blessing to others. Don't just pour all everything that you have. It's like, I am blessed. Me, myself, my children, my husband. No, we need to share what we have. How can God pour in if you don't pour out? The more I give it, the more God bless me. They will say, uh, Sister Carol have this and Sister Carol have that. Sister Carol know how to give. She learned the hand with how to give. Out of my need, I had to give. So God keep blessing me and blessing me because I consider myself a giver. We are praying prayers, but we are not living. You will find, you know, a young lady will be saying, I need a husband, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me to get a husband. Pray for me, or oh, oh, a young man will say, pray for me to get a wife. But yet you're sleeping around, and you call yourself a believer. You have to be true to yourself. You have to know that God has called you to be holy. We serve a holy God, so we have to be holy. We can't do the things that the world do it. Get to yourself between the port and the altar and pray. Now it's time for us to pray more than ever. Hallelujah. Oh God. Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing, people? We are home. Everything is shut down. And this is the time that we should be spending. Getting up early. Getting up 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And spending time before God. But what are we doing? We watch TV until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. 12, 1 o'clock, we still watch TV. So 11, 12 o'clock, we now get a nap because we're tired. What about God? Well, God, you know, right now, I'm on vacation. What will happen if God take a vacation from us? We're not on vacation. God has given us this time to come and get to know him. God has given us this time to spend with him. This is the time that prayer should be going up to God more than ever. There are many people. I am a prayer, on a prayer line. Seven days a week. Morning and evening. Get up early in the morning. And we send in a prayer. People from all over the world is on this prayer line. We send in our praises out to God. We send in our prayers to God. We pray for the nation. That's 
what God wants. We need to come back to basic. Don't just lie down and sleep and think, well, I'm on vacation because, you know, everything is shut down and you can't go to work. This is time to spend reading. This is time searching. Examine yourself. God is saying, this is time for you to come before me. This is time to cry out for your nation. Cry out for your family. There's so many family that we have unsaved. What are we doing, people? What's it? Examine yourself. How much more can I speak? God has been sending word upon word upon word, and people just living their life. God said he's looking for committed Christian. How can God fill us more with more and more of him if the little that we give him, the little that God gave us, we're not using it. Some of us are like the, uh, the man who has his talent. We, we're not using it. We don't want to be like the man who, you know, invested the talent, the five talents, and get five more. No, we're hiding ours. We come into church and we sit in door, and that's enough. We raise a hand, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yes, we sing a few songs, and that's enough. Some people not even sing any few songs because they come into church after worship. They consider worship not important. God is saying, examine yourself, people. My people, examine yourself. This is time. He said, I'm not coming soon anymore. I'm coming. Hallelujah. The church is closed. And you don't see that as something, as a warning. Why, would, why, why must God go to the church right now? For what? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Why must God go to the church? God wants to fill this place. But how can he fill this place if he can't fill us with what he, more and more of himself? How can he fill us with more, more of himself if we don't spend time in his presence? Examine yourself, people. You are cursing yourself by your attitude and your action. God is looking at attitude right now. He's looking at what we are doing with this time that we have. Hallelujah. In Isaiah, Chapter 61, verse 4, it said, And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the ruined city, the desolation of many generations. God is calling us to build back the structure of his church. It's not a man church, as many people think. It's his church. When the apostles left us, the lesson is in a pattern. We have a pattern how God wanted church to be. But man has changed that pattern and have been doing their own thing throughout the generation. And God said, get back to the pattern. Get back to where I have called you. Hallelujah. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. We have to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God has called us to be disciples. We're supposed to go out there and bring and make disciples, bringing souls into the kingdom. But when we become so comfortable, we're not doing what we have been called to do. We believe if we stay and we pray, people will come in the church. We have to go out. That has been given down to us. We have to go out and bring in. Not sit on church and be comfortable. We want to be in, you know, a nice seat, air conditioned, 
And when we find out she jump in the car and we go home. And the next Sunday, we're not coming at the prayer line. The prayer line has been open up for us. We're too busy to come at the prayer line. So we're not praying with anybody. We're not spending time with God, but yet we're not coming at the prayer line to pray. We don't have time for that. We're busy. We have shows to watch. Some believers right now, they could watch series of all shows that they didn't get to watch. We have Netflix, we have the fire stick, so we can go back and we can watch all the movies. We have all um, soap opera that we have to watch all that we haven't watched before. God needs to deliver some believers. A good deliverance you all need. What about spending time with him? This is not time to be making plain. This is time to be serious about what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. God is calling his strength awake out of their sleep. As believers, we are called to serve others. Who are you serving? Some are called to serve in the fivefold ministry. Some are called to serve in the marketplace. Some are called to serve, you know, in different areas of the government. In whatever God has called you to serve, do it to the best of your ability because you have to do it unto God. God is calling us. And he's looking at us right now. What are we doing with what God has given unto us? Hallelujah. We have to know that he who called us, he is more than able to equip us. He has already equipped us, but to give us all that we need and all that we desire for what he has called us to. We have entered into a new season. And God has given us a special grace to align with our destiny. We have to fulfill the divine purpose and reason for which we were born. God say, I'm giving my children a second chance to finish the call that I has placed upon them. God is waiting on us. He's looking at our attitude at this point in time. Are we taking this time to know him or are we still too busy? All over the home. Hallelujah. If you are not sure what God has called you into, what part of the ministry God has called you into, spend time with Him. God said, in this time and in this season, He's about to answer prayers like that. I have seen prayers and I have prayed. At the beginning of this year, right here in this church, and I have seen the answer to the prayers. I'm not going to say what it is right now, it's not time, but I've seen answer to prayers that I have prayed in this church. Hallelujah. And I thank God for His faithfulness. I thank God that when we go before Him with a pure heart, God hears us. Not when we go and spend five minutes before him and say, God, that's enough. I'm busy for the rest of the day. I'm very busy. No, we spend time in his presence. That's where the anointing comes. Most people believe if someone who's anointed lay hands on you, you will get anointed. You get anointed by spending time in his presence. Hallelujah. God is waiting to answer us. He's waiting to hear our cry. Hallelujah. In this season, we must step out in bold faith, God is saying. And he's going to honor that faith. Hallelujah. God said he wants to reveal himself to his children. The Lord said revival is about to take place all over the world. And this revival is going to touch more people than COVID-19 took away. More people is going to be touched by this revival 
that's about to take place. It's going to be like white fire. I lie down and I'm listening to talking to God. God said it will be like a white fire. And many people who have been sitting in church doing nothing, this revival is going to bring changes because he's going to bring people in church who is going to step out and do ministry that people in church have refused to do. Many of you will say, but he, this person just come. Yes, God is going to use them because you have been sitting on your gift for too long. God said, I'm about to use people who is going to come out of this revival. There's a great revival coming, people. Hallelujah. Our voices must be heard all over this place. We cannot stay silent anymore. Too many of you have been, you know, it's like you're afraid to say, to tell someone Jesus loved them. You don't want to hurt anybody. You don't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers, as they say. You need to know that you have been chosen for such a time as this. Many people wish they could see this time. You know, you're all looking at what's happening right now, but look up and see what's happening. Ask God to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so you can see what's happening in the spirit. I'm excited about what is about to happen. Hallelujah. Many people right now are living in fear. But we are there to help those people. We are there to let these people know that there's a hope, there's something better awaiting them. Hallelujah. There are more press going up to heaven, no more than ever before. You know, the press has taken over the internet. The internet was something that you had so much pornography, so much bad things was happening on the internet. But right now, the internet is flooded with prayers. Hallelujah. And we have to make sure that our prayers go up. Changes have taken place in body of Christ. Changes that nobody expected. We have to look different. We have to be different. Because we have to change with the changes that has taken place. No longer will church be like how it was before. The old structure of church has to change. Hallelujah. Because we're coming out with the pattern that God has set for us. Hallelujah. In Revelation 2, chapter, um, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, it said, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast blessed thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen and repent and do thy first work, or else I will come quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Are we ready to repent and do our first love work? God said, Come back to your first love. Come back. Come back from whence. You have fallen from when you first know me. God said it's time to repent and come back. Hallelujah. So, Father God, as we come before you today, Father, we repent, O oh God, of every sin that has overtaken us. Father, we repent for not spending time in your presence. God, we repent, O oh God, for not spending enough time in your word. Father, we repent, O oh God, from not answering your call. Father, we repent, O oh God, for that spirit of complacency that has overtaken us. God, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Lord God. Forgive your church. Forgive your people, Lord. Father, no more when we have time for everything else but you. Father, no more when you be second or third place in our life. Father, we place you on the highest place. We place you, oh God, as number one in our life. Father, we repent, oh God, on behalf of your body. 
Father, we ask, O Lord, that by your spirit that you will minister to each and every one. Father, who heard this word today? Father, minister to each and every one, O God, who need realignment. Who need, O God, to turn around. Father, everyone, O God, who heard this word. Father, I pray. Father, that you will minister somewhere, somehow. Father, and let them know. Father, that you truly love them. Father, and you are waiting with open arms. Father, to receive them back into your fold. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Carol, for your word this morning. Amen. It's a word for every one of us that we should examine ourselves. Amen. Praise God. But I like the part that said, that let us return unto our first love. Thank you, Jesus, that the Bible says, if we draw nigh unto you, that you will draw nigh unto us. So we thank God for that word this morning. And where we have become complacent in our lives as believers, that we can return to God. You must make that conscious decision to say, I am returning to the Almighty God. So we want to thank God for his word this morning. We thank God for the time of worship and praise. And we give God all the praise and all the honor and the glory this morning. And just at this time, I'd just like to share with you our announcements for today. Uh, praise God, starting from tomorrow, which is the Monday the 20th, uh, you need to listen to me carefully. Uh, we would be having our uh, deceased brother, Brother Roll, his funeral, his funeral service would be taking place. They have made some changes. It would be taking place right here at Global Encounter Ministries. Uh, the body would be reaching the church at 9.30 in the morning, 9.30 tomorrow, please God. And for those of you who would like to pay your last respect to, your, uh, to our brother that has now passed on, we are asking you, please, when you do come, uh, the, 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 the body would be lying in the church, and we are asking you just, uh, we would have someone there that would be uh, reg regulating, would be uh, 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 making sure that everything works Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To make sure that everything works uh, 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 the way it's, it's supposed to. And while, and while I'm saying that, the reason I'm saying that is because, and I need to be quick here, is because you know that uh, uh, we cannot have more than five individuals in the church at any one given time. So we are asking you, please, as you come, to pay your last respect to our brother. We just view the body and you can return to your respective homes. Uh, the service will start from 10, 10 a.m. And, um, and of course the body would be leaving at, at 11 a.m. It would be going to the San Fernando area in which there would be a viewing and then the body would be cremated. So we are asking folks please you can come between the hours of 9.30 and 10 so that you will be able to pay your last respects to our brother Roll that has passed on. Truly, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord, but to, to, is to be present with the Lord. So we thank God that our brother walked with Christ and that now he is translated into glory. So we give God the thanks and the praise for the time that we had fellowship with him. Praise the Lord. And um, on Tuesday, please God, Tuesday, we have our prayer meeting. I'd just like to remind folks, please. We, we need to be connected one to the other. Our prayer meeting on Tuesday starts at 7 p.m. and it goes to 8 p.m. Just one hour. And we need folks to join us so you can help us in the time of prayer. Amen. On Tuesday, we have another prayer meeting again. This time it starts at 7 today and it goes to 8, just half an hour, 7 to 8 p.m. Amen. And Saturday morning, we have morning cry. That starts from 6 a.m. in the morning. Sister Bonio is the individual that is responsible for that. And of course, we are asking all of you who are a part of the ministry, uh, you know your commitment to the church, and you can always bring your tithes and offering 
at this, at, at this time when it is that you find it convenient for you to come and drop it at the church. So we want to give God all the praise today. We thank God. Truly, we had a tremendous time in the presence of our Most High God. Yeah, and don't forget, we are back again next week, Sunday. We will be back from 8 a.m. in the morning. And we are going to give God a tremendous time. Amen. Praise God. So we just want to give God the praise and all the honor this morning for what he has con continuing to do in the lives of our, in the lives of the believer. Hear me say, as I said before when I started, we, our God, is going to take us through this period. And it's a time to spend time with God. It's a time to reflect on the goodness of God in the land of the living. It's a time to draw closer to God. Amen. Like never before. Because God, I, I, I firmly believe God is going to do a mighty work in the lives of his people. And we need to be prepared. Amen. Praise the Lord. So wherever you are, I'm asking you, could you stand this morning with me as we are about to dismiss in prayer. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you the honor and the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this time of service. O oh God, we thank God for the time of worship. We thank you for the worship minister. We thank you for Brother Niall. We pray, God, that truly your hands will continue to be upon them, that you will strengthen them, O oh God, as you continue to use them for your honor and your glory. We thank you for Minister Carol and the word, O oh God, that a man needs, a woman needs to examine themselves, ourselves, as we continue to draw closer unto you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, this morning we give you thanks. And we give you praise that everything was done in decency and in order. So, Father, we thank you that your hands will be upon us during the course of this day, during the course of this week. God, you are going to keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. And, God, we give only you this morning all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. We pray with thanksgiving. And everybody say amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just say one more thing. Please, for those of you who wish to join us, even on Tuesday, and you're having any kind of difficulties with your equipment, or you need some assistance technically, we are asking that you can call Brother Keon, you can call um, Brother Esme, or you can call Minister Carol, that would be able to assist you. Amen. God bless you real good. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Have a blessed day.